Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and in this video we're going to be looking at Linux Explorer and you might be asking yourself, well what is Linux Explorer? Well, Linux Explorer is a forensics toolbox for Linux operating systems so in reality what they give you or what this script is is essentially is giving you an advanced process manager and a forensic toolbox that, that will allow you to analyze anything on the Linux on a Linux client all right, so some of the uh, functionality that it does offer is it will give you a full process list. Uh, it will allow you to inspect the memory map and you can, uh, you know, also fetch memory strings. So it, it's fantastic for forensics. For those of you interested in forensics, this is a fantastic tool that can allow you to perform uh, some forensic analysis on a client or on a target computer. Um, it allows you to dump the, you know, process memory again, uh, very, very useful for forensics. Uh, it allows you to view the user list uh, on that system. Uh, it allows you to uh, search for files. Um, you can look at the system log, uh, the firewall log, uh, bash history. So really, really useful stuff. It allows you to have an anti-rootkit uh, software or framework. So one of the, the, the supported one here is CH rootkit. And uh, yeah, so uh, let's look at how to get it installed and some of the requirements that you need to install before you move on. So uh, it does require Python, uh, more specifically Python 2.7, right? And uh, it needs requires Yara or Y-A-R-A. Uh, it requires CH rootkit if you are tra planning on using it. I'm not going to uh, use it right now, but I'll show you how to install it. All right, so uh, let me just open up the link here. I have it open up on my browser. As you can see, it's on GitHub, and I will be leaving the link in the description so you can check it out. Uh, so I'm just going to clone the repository like so so i'm just going to copy the link there and uh, what i'm going to do is open up my terminal which is right here i already have it opened up let me just zoom in so you guys have a better idea of what's going on all right so i'm on my desktop and that's probably where i want to store it if you're on your computer i recommend that you keep it in your optional folder so that is uh, you know your opt folder where you keep all programs that are not installed with the system because these tools uh, may have some bugs and, you know, mixing it up with your system isn't the best of things to do. Um, so, yeah, let's clone it. So, git clone. Git clone. By the way, this does work on any Linux distribution. So, uh, you know, you can use it on Ubuntu, Fedora, uh, whatever you feel is uh, comfortable for you. So, I'm just going to paste the link. There we are. And I'm just going to hit enter. And depending on your internet speed, it will get the uh, file downloaded. Uh, so yeah, for please forgive my slow internet right now. It isn't the best of connection speeds, but it should get it downloaded immediately. So uh, just give it a few seconds to start up uh, and get all the files downloaded and we should be good to go. All right, so uh, let it just finish up. There we are. It's getting all the files that we need. Uh, there are quite a lot of files actually. All right, so we've got it uh, on my desktop for some reason. Um, I can't uh, seem to get it on my desktop. Oh, it's probably on my root uh, directory. So what I'm going to do is go to my desktop. Sorry, uh, there we are. Because I am in my user, sorry. Oh, I am on my desktop, sorry. So let me just list that out. There we are. So it is the Linux Explorer file. So let me just enter there. All right, so let me clear the terminal now. And uh, to list the files, there are a few things that you have to do. And uh, one of them is to look at the requirements. All right. So uh, or the, the required packages for that matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to display the requirements that are, uh, you know, given to us in the requirements.txt file. All right. So I'm going to hit enter and it's going to tell you you need these packages to be installed. So you need Flask, uh, PS Utils, uh, just uh, some uh, libraries and utilities that you will need. So what you can do is you can uh, install it using the pip uh, install pip install r and use the requirements the requirements.txt so it'll automatically get the packages for you so you can just do that i probably have them already installed so it shouldn't take too much time as well and uh, once you have the requirements installed there we are so i already have them installed as you can see a requirement already satisfied so I know I have them, but for you, in your case, you can go ahead and uh, get it done, right? Uh, so um, an another thing you have to make sure that you need to do is uh, we need to configure the um, we need to configure the Python 
file. So let me just clear this up. And then if I list the files, we have the Python, uh, the uh, config.python. So Python config.python and uh, whoops, uh, let me use the nano editor. My bad. Config config.python. There we are. So in here, if you wanted to use the uh, the VT OTX APIs, uh, that's a special tool. Sorry about that notification. That's um, uh, that's essentially an API that allows you to uh, or that gives you rootkit uh, root uh, detection. All right. So you, if you want to use the API, you can go ahead and just Google it and you can get their API and that will allow you to use their um, their rootkit detector. All right. So but I'm not going to use that because it's really not necessary at the moment. So I'm just going to exit the that I'm just going to exit that and we can move on to, uh, you know, installing our other required uh, packages or uh, the requirements basically. So you make sure you have Python. I'm sure uh, the distro you're on already has Python installed. So no need for that. Uh, you can then just install Yara or Y-A-R-A. -A. So apt get install Yara. There we are. And uh, I probably already have it installed. There we are. Okay. And then you can choose to install your ch root kit, which is also optional. Get install uh, ch root kit like so, and it should install it. Ch uh, root kit. For some reason, I'm not getting it. Ch uh, yeah, chk root kit. Sorry about that. My spelling was wrong. Uh, so chk root kit. There we are. Already have it installed. And once you're done, that should be good to go now. And what you have to do now is start the uh, the file explorer server, the Linux explorer server for that matter. So the way to do that is to use the um, Python. So Python uh, Linux explorer, we're using the Linux explorer dot py or dot Python and it's going to start it and it's going to say running on that link. So let's open that link. All right. And it's going to open up on Firefox. There we are. So uh, the link is 127. Dot zero dot zero one. Uh, the port is eighty eighty. All right. So it's going to open up and it's going to give you this fantastic web interface and it's going to start loading the services. And there you have it. It gives you the services. Pretty pretty awesome. And you can see all what's running and their process IDs, their process, uh, their usernames uh, under which they are running. Uh, if you have multiple accounts. All right. So you then have your users tab right up here that gives you your users and what they're using. So as you can see, I have my user the app to the package manager that's running we have bef uh we have um iodine mail so these are all user services that are being run and you can look at their user id uh their username uh, of course you have their home directory what uh, what their directory they are from so it's really really a fantastic tool for forensic analysis and finding out you know what processes are running uh and i really really see this uh you know to be useful for servers of course, most servers will run the command line interface, uh, but uh, you know, if you install a GUI and a desktop environment, this can be fantastic as well. You then have your find, which allows you to search for, you know, files, or uh, if you're searching for a specific, uh, you're searching for specific, uh, you know, hidden files or malware uh, and stuff like that, you know, for suspicious files, uh, stuff like that. You then have your netstat that allows you to check your your incoming and outgoing connection as you can see so you know we have the um the uh the process manager that is currently working and as you can see it is um it does have connections in incoming and outgoing through the different ports we then have some other traffic coming and going so yeah pretty pretty awesome let me just zoom back in there we are all right so you can view nutstack you can also view your logs Right. So I'm going to just try and uh, keep my logs uh, to myself. But let's look at my UFW uh, firewall. Ah, so I don't have U UFW firewall installed. Again, that's really, really another cool tool. If you want a video on that, please let me know. Uh, looking at the authorities log, as you can see, uh, yeah, the power button. Yeah, I, I guess you can see how awesome this can really be. So, yeah, you then have your anti rootkit section which is again for checking for rootkits and you can start the service when you game. So what's going to happen now is let me just open up the browser is when you get the service started, it will uh, obviously give you the functionality of checking whether you have any rootkits installed. So really, really helpful as well. All right. Then have Yara, which uh, again is for setting rule sets 
and for file directories and you know process ids just scanning your files on your file structure for uh, anything uh, for anything that you specify uh, with the path all right uh, you then have your tick adapters here i mean your rule set which is set to default are uh, the tick adapter uh, and you can see you have your app to ghost drag and ghost rat and uh, you can upload your different year rules files so pretty pretty awesome functionality it does give you and if we go back to the processes you can see that uh, again it gives you a lot of information about the services that are running it does take a while to start up but um, overall pretty pretty awesome then have the ability to perform a search for the processes that are running so that's also pretty pretty cool as well like I can run processes that are running under my username and as you can see it's going to tell you what's running so for example I have the uh, system library running we have the uh, we have some the you know the dynamic config service running uh, just really really just normal stuff uh, regarding the system that's running anyway guys that was uh, it for this video uh, Linux Explorer is quite an awesome tool for forensic analysis and for system management uh, Linux system management that is I hope you guys found value in this video if you did please leave a like down below it would really I would really appreciate it if you have any questions or suggestions please let me know in the comment section or you can hit me up on uh, the on my social networks or on kick for the latest hacking news and resources please check out my website hsploit.com the link will be in the description and yeah thank you so much for watching guys have a fantastic day